What's up, guys? I'm Garrett Marchesano, and this is the MMA Rundown, brought to you by FanDuel. We're going to talk about one trending topic for a few minutes, and then move on to the next one. Today, I'm joined by, as always, my co-host, Chris Holds It Down Holdsworth. Let's go. Let's go. All right, the first topic we have up today is a recap recap of this last week. One of them, Chris, is Dustin Poirier sliding out and doing a subtle Twitter call out. Where you at, Nathan? <laughs> Nathan Diaz. <laughs> I like it how he says it's Nathan, question mark. Yeah. And uh, he's done this before. He's obviously in contract negotiations with Charles Oliveira for the lightweight strap. Why would he call out Nathan in the middle of that negotiation? Why not? Yeah. You know, like the day of age of social media and entertainment, you know, like yeah. Nate Diaz is a trash talker. You know, Dustin Poirier is no no chump and he throws back when he feels he people does. are throwing at him. So why not keep that spark alive? He knows Nate Diaz is a big money fight. I think it's a winnable fight for Dustin Poirier. Yeah. Um, why not have that in the back? You know, back in once he beats Charles, or I don't know if he becomes champ, maybe it's not even a factor anymore. But at the same time, it, it's going to create buzz. Fans are going to hear about it. It's just going to up his stock by you know talking crap to Nate Diaz. I agree. And maybe it is what you're thinking. He's not necessarily trying to go for that fight. Maybe he's just stoking the fire a little bit. Like, oh, I'm going for the championship belt, but I want this early next year. So let me throw a little something out there. Yeah. And the ironic thing is that. It's just how the game is these days. He'll, he would probably make twice as much money fighting Nate Diaz than he would Charles Oliveira for the belt. Yeah, Nate Even Diaz. Even with the championship bonus. He, he knows, he, oh, he, he, like Nick said, you know I'm the money fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he is the money fight. So that's interesting. We'll see how that plays out. But I, I, I want to see Nate fight either Dustin or Connor next. I think those would both be fun fights yeah. and stir up the drama. Next one is, you know, Francis Naganu, uh, John Jones. We all saw Cyril Gaon just take out Derek Lewis. Incredible matchup in the heavyweight division. The rumors are Ariel Hawani reported that the UFC is aggressively trying to make Francis Naganu versus John Jones for the end of this year. Usually it's the interim champ. He has to merge with, with the title holder, right? Yeah. That's, that's supposed to be, that's the whole point of the interim belt, right? It's like the guaranteed number one contender. Now they're just going to push that aside and give John Jones shot the the belt. So, what do you think the mix up is here? That kind of threw us for you know a spin because yeah. you know we're thinking it's going to be gone and you know Francis now with the whole build up, like you said, the interim belt. But you know John Jones has the clout. He's you know former champ, former goat, you know long time reigning yeah. champ. You know possibly one of the best to ever do it. They know that's probably going to be more of a money fight. Oh, the more. Francis and John Jones is going to be a huge pay per view, and the UFC is all about you know making the money. They're 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 trying to make the big bucks, and if they if they have any you know thing that you know the saying gone and Francis might not do as well or oh no uh, no, no way it will yeah so we we both know the UFC always goes for the bigger fights they they want the entertainment. And, you know, I think the John Jones story of him going up in heavyweight is going to be a good buildup. It's going to draw a lot of attention. And then fighting the monster in, in Francis Gosh. Nagano, I think it's going to be a huge, huge pay-per-view. So that's why I would see uh, the UFC switching things up. Yeah, I think if you look at the entire UFC roster, that's the biggest matchup that you could possibly make right now. With yeah. Conor McGregor being out. John Jones is considered widely the greatest of all time in mixed martial arts, period. Not even just the UFC. He's he's right up there. And then Francis Nagano is probably is the scariest guy in the UFC right now with that kind of power. And it's a fascinating story with Jones moving up to heavyweight. So I don't blame him. They would absolutely kill with that pay-per-view. Cyril Gaon will, will be there. He just came off of a great performance. He'll get the winner. It really is just <laughs> throwing down Stipe, who keeps on begging for a fight. And he deserves it. They just called him the greatest heavyweight of all time. Came from Dana White's mouth. And he's just sitting there without a fight. He's begging for a fight. So that's interesting. But last topic we'll bring up before we jump on is Connor threw out that he expects an immediate rematch with Dustin Poirier upon his return, even if Dustin is the champ. 
you know, the UFC will be tempted to that do that. That doesn't make any sense, though. I know. They, they'll be tempted to do that because they know they can make $100 million yeah. off that fight. But you can't give Conor the title shot at coming off of two L's like that. No way. Yeah, not not in my opinion, no. but we've we've seen worse. Like <laughs> yeah, like like we just talked about the UFC is about the money, and if they feel that that's going to be a bigger opportunity to make money compared to whatever whoever else is in line. Yeah, I would see them like oh, second fight was you know yeah, it yeah, ended in this, you know, and then the whole build up for the third fight it being for a championship belt. I can kind of see that it's definitely going to raise a lot of you know a lot of uh, buzz yeah. because like there's going to be uh, lightweights that, you know like whoa what the heck why up. why are I, I getting the shot like this is not right and I think the true fans are going to hop on their side as well like hey this isn't right you guys are baby feeding Connor you I guys agree. are giving him all the cool opportunities and when all these other guys have actually put in the work they're fighting the toughest guys and they've been waiting like they've been being patient. While things have been tied up with all this other stuff, racking up wins. Yeah. Like, think of a guy like Darius who has like a nine fight win streak and he can't get a yeah, title man. shot. Yeah, <laughs> If I had a nine fight win streak, I would be pissed if I didn't get a title shot. <laughs> exactly. So we'll see. I think I don't think they can do it, but we'll see if they try to stir up the storyline to to justify it. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Still on the Conor McGregor topic. He has just been calling out people on social over the past three, four days. It started with Daniel Cormier calling him fat and slow and drunk at the press conference and unprofessional. Just finding any way he can dig in and, and go after him. I love uh, DC's comeback. You know, he's like, "Hey, you know, get some help and win a fight." You know, <laughs> he's he's not going too aggressive, but you can tell it's annoying him. And then he's also recently, just yesterday, he's going after Michael Bisbing. And talking trash on his fights because Michael talked some trash about uh, Connor in his recent Believe You Me podcast. So it's interesting. What do you think about uh, Connor really diving and, and going after these guys? Connor's one of those type of guys. He sits back, he watches everything, he reads everything, <laughs> and you know, as popular and famous as the guy is, I think he's really in tuned to the MMA uh, news, the MMA reporters, every everything people say. Uh, he's really in tune to that. Yeah. He sees everything and he hears everything. So he's probably hearing some things. Cormier has chippered, has Bisbing is chipper because we both know yeah. Cormier and Bisbing are super genuine, tell it like it is, keeping it real guys that just comes right out of their mouth. They don't really True. hold anything back. So if they're feeling a certain way, if they say something, you know, and if it's pissed Connor off, I can see how he's you know, using his platform and, you know, trying to get those stabs back at him. Cause, but that's what Connor's good at. He's good at, yeah. you know, ini- you know, creating that, that back and forth, you know, trash talk. And, he, and he's, he's pretty good at it. Jumping in the headline whenever he wants. Of course, every time he does something like this, every media outlet picks yeah. up. Look at us talking about it right now. So he knows how to stay in the headlines. And, you know, he has some funny... <laughs> Dan funny Corey is a fat mess. Yeah. I didn't see that. Dude, Dude that's, he, that's hilarious. He had some good ones. Cormier said, don't worry about me or how I dress. Worry about the dudes who keep beating your ass in the octagon. Chel Sonnen chimed in and said, Daniel did not show up to anything drunk, guys. Do not mistake that. Let's say he did. Connor said he did. Connor's now a snitch. He ratted on him. You tattled on the boys, Connor. Okay, I, so Chael is, is getting DC's back. Um, it's pretty funny. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, these are the two biggest, uh, broadcasters, you know, Biz Bing and DC. You'd think that the UFC would kind of want to be protective over them. It's their, it's their biggest pay-per-view draw versus their best broadcasters. So we'll see how it plays out. It's pretty funny. Uh, Twitter beef to watch. All right, let's jump on to the next topic. Want to get your opinion on this one, Chris. And I, I thought we would be seeing more of this, uh, with the Olympics and, and now with the fighting going on, Gable Stevenson. Uh, comes out with a gold medal and tweets out that he's interested in joining the UFC. He also had some the NFL agents reach out to him. So he's a young freak athlete, you know. So of course, is he like twenty one or something? Yeah, super young, yeah. early twenties. Very athletic, highly skilled wrestler. So if he has any striking game, you know, I bet a bunch of coaches out there are dying to get their hands on him and work with him. So if you were Gable Stevenson and your stock is just flying right now, he's going on all the talk shows, what 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 would you do? Would you come into a lower pro, pro, uh, promotion and build your way up, or would you meet with Dana and come in right away to the UFC? 
Well, we both know that you just can't come right into the UFC with just a yeah. wrestling gold medal. You know, it took Henry Cejudo years probably of just training boxing and mixing everything together, learning the jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And Henry was fighting on, on lower-level shows before he got to the UFC. You know, he had to get the experience. I'm correct, yeah. right? Yeah. He, yeah. How many fights? Did you, Henry Cejudo? How many fights did he have before the UFC? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think he can't. Up. He didn't come straight into the UFC. Yeah, I don't though. think he did. I don't yeah. Think he did. Um, you have to. Uh, you got to get this straight, guys. Like, you can't just go into the UFC with one strong. If I was just a jiu-jitsu guy trying to go fight and, you know, get into the ultimate fighter, I wouldn't have done very well. But, you know, I have worked years on my striking, my wrestling, putting everything together. And, you know, that's where, you know, the UFC is now. You cannot be a one-sided fighter anymore. Maybe back in the day, you know, he signed right away and, get, and he can probably compete with some of the heavyweights in, in the, the UFC right, right now. Yeah. But at the same time, he's not going to be able to he's not going to be able to beat someone that knows how to stuff a couple takedowns and's got really good power and good and good striking. It's just not not going to happen. So I say he spends a year or two, at least a year, learn some jujitsu, learn some jujitsu defense, um, and then learn some boxing, learn how to you know check some kicks, yeah, and then maybe start talking to the UFC. But I think you definitely have to get at least three fights. Um, before you even think about getting the UFC. You get him warmed up. He did. Yeah. Uh, John Jones accepted him to come over to J- uh, Jackson Wink and train with them. So no better guy to train with. He's negotiating with Bellator right now, in addition to the UFC. And, yeah, you know, he put out some quotes of, like, no one can stop my double leg, you know, him, him saying that he's going to take, you know, take guys down. But there's a difference, and you could speak to this, between a guy who has to match your weight in wrestling that's just been a wrestler his whole life. And, of course, they know takedown defenses as wrestlers. Then you go to a guy like Derek Lewis, who's been negating takedowns for a large portion of his life. Yeah. Who's a big dude. He's going to have, you know, I don't know if this he'll be weighing in at 265. Derek Lewis makes the limit. And he has some raw strength. It's different than these youngsters that, you know, that he's fighting now. He's got a, yeah. a, a, a large dude. So he'd have trouble with the guy with Derek Lewis. And, and it's going to, he'll, he'll learn quick, though, coming into the UFC or coming into MMA training in, in general. Um, Really, other than that, they opened up uh, some betting lines that he would come in as the slight favorite against Derek Lewis, um, and I do not go with that at all. I think uh, him yeah. coming in fresh. Derek, yeah, Derek Lewis did really good against my old buddy Jared Rochalt, and Rochalt was an NCAA Division One wrestler. Made it to you know, I forget what place, but he was up there. Um, yeah. So and. He didn't really translate as well going into MMA, and that's fine. But everybody doesn't do that. So we'll see. We'll see how Gable Stevenson picks up the striking, how he picks up the the the, the, cha- the striking with the grappling, because it's different. Your double your double leg changes. You yeah. can't double leg every, when knees are coming at your face. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a little yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Uppercuts are coming at you, so you got you got to set those things up, especially at the UFC level. No, that's true. But I'm excited for him, and uh, I'll be definitely checking out his first fight when he eventually books it. All right, let's move on to the next topic here. We got Sean O'Malley said in a recent podcast, No Jumper podcast, that he is fighting outside the top 15 on purpose. And the rumors were that Sean Shelby was trying to line up uh, Sean O'Malley versus Frankie Edgar for the end of the year, which would be a great fight. You know, Frankie Edgar is a longtime top 10 uh, fighter, he, he's coming off a nasty loss against Corey Sanhagen. Sean O'Malley's on his way up. It could, it could be a good matchup for Sean to really take a jump. He'd probably jump in the top ten. But Sean O'Malley says he gets paid the same regardless of who he fights. I have a contract. I get paid a certain amount of money whether I fight Smolka, some dude, or Peter Yan. I get paid the same. Um, so you know, there's some. Yeah, there's some sense to this, you know, he's, he's getting that same paycheck. Some people say, where's your ambition to fight for UFC gold? And then you'd be known as one of the greatest fighters in the world and one of the best in the UFC. And then you'll get more sponsors and you'll get more notoriety Then the UFC will have to pay you more. But he's in a little bit of a different boat because he has such this high ranking personal brand. If you will, he built a social media following he has this Twitch following He's still young, and he's staying outside the top 15. He's thinking, hey, I'm going to rack up these wins, rack up these win bonuses, and once I get paid more, I'll jump into the top top ranks. What are your thoughts? 
Yeah, I don't blame him, and I kind of agree with him. <laughs> I was in his shoes with, uh, you know, the brand he's got, the following he has. He's not hurting for sponsors. Like, he's not, you know, of course, extra sponsors would be cool, but, like, I guarantee you people are throwing things at yeah. him. They're throwing money at him to, you know, wear this, to say this, to be a part of this. So he's, I think that's smart. You know, why rush into you know, the top five, you know, when you, maybe you feel like your, your skills need to, you get know, better. get yeah. better and get a little bit more well-rounded before you fight the top five. You know, he already kind of got exposed uh, by Cheeto yeah. and that was a guy who's up there in those top ranks. So he yeah. probably was like, all right, let me pull back. I'm not getting paid a lot of money to fight these best guys. So I'm going to fight out my contract fighting these yeah, guys in the, in the lower levels. And I agree with that get my experience, keep getting paid, keep growing my brand and maybe even get like some cool finishes, which is just going to, you know, his stock's going to rise off of that too, compared to fighting some of these better guys where they're going to be super close fights. Maybe you're getting injured and you're out for a ton of time with these guys at the lower level, you know, you're not getting injured as much. You're getting some flashy KOs and finishes. So it makes sense in his eyes and in my eyes as well. Like, Keep doing that until the UFC either wants to renegotiate the contract and pay you more to fight, you know, at a higher level. Um, yeah, because there's no rush, man. He's young. He's already got his brand established. Uh, um, I, I think he just needs to keep doing what he's doing. Yeah, no, I agree with everything you said, and I like that. You know, I always love it when the fighters stand up for themselves. They said, you know, Sean Shelby was extremely upset yeah. that he couldn't book. You know, Frankie Edgar fight. It's like, you know, he's going to look, screw you. He's going to look out for himself. It's not all about yeah. the the UFC and the entertainment and, and, you know, put on a bloodbath for the show. Of course, it, w- it would do super well, that fight. Frankie Edgar versus Sean O'Malley. Probably be a co-main event. A lot of people would tune in for it. But when I first saw the headline, I was like, oh, Sean O'Malley, why why are you doing that? But now as I hear more and, pe- more, and more people agree with it and talk about it, really thinking about it, especially the way you just broke it down, it does make sense. You know, why risk your health? Make the money. He's going to be in this game for a long time. So do it on the next contract and, and get that big money. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's move on to the next topic. We've got Jake Paul puts out his official hit list on all the guys he wants to knock out <laughs> over the next few years. Nate or Nick Diaz. So we already saw, names. we see Gibb is on there, Ben Askren, Nate Robinson, the people we already took out. Tyron Woodley's next. He's got Canelo on there after that, which is crazy. Good luck, bro. Yeah. Nate or Nick Diaz. Okay. Kamara Usman. Tommy Fury. Tyson Fury's son. Conor McGregor. KSI. <laughs> Gervonta Davis. Wow, he's going after 134. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, I think he's like 150, but still. Logan Jake is like Paul, 205. Mark. Yeah, and then his brother's the last one. So I thought this would be interesting to bring up. He's got this list going. And so my question for you is, after Tyron Woodley, let's say for the argument of this Jake Paul list, even though you know, I'm rooting for Tyron to, to put it on Jake here, let's say he beats Tyron Woodley. Who on this list would you want to see Jake pa- Paul fight next? I would like to see one of the Diaz brothers. That would uh, be cool. Yeah, or I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing like Conor McGregor either, like – I don't really care to see Tommy Fury's son. Um, yeah. David Davis is a lot smaller. I don't care to see him versus Logan Paul. Or KSI. Uh, yeah, you know, not. So I think Connor would be fun or Nate or Nick Diaz. Canelo, I feel like, is not really going to be too too competitive. I think, I think, yeah, I think Canelo cool. would wax him in a few rounds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so hopefully Tyrone Woodley, you know, gets this dub. But, you know, if Jake takes him out, man, uh, he, he has the right to call out somebody else now, like one of the other top guys. Like, I would pay to see the Usman fight, but that would never happen because Usman's tied up with the contract. Oh, yeah. yeah, especially being a champ. But I could see, like, a Nate and Nick, especially if they're at the end of their contract. Um, we'll see. Connor, you know, they did it for Floyd, but Jake Paul and Dana does not like Jake. So, yeah. But he's a businessman, so yeah. if he can make $100 million, we'll see. But interesting. We'll see what happens next. We'll see what happens. That's coming up August 29th, I believe, is Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley. So that's coming up. Wow. Wait, yeah, it's two, two, week, two weeks away. Even. Cool. All right. Let's move on to the next topic. Final one on here. Quickly, we'll talk about Diego Sanchez is very close to signing a deal, deal with Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. So he's going to be back. Diego's back. 
He's got his old training partner back as well, so he's ordering some quirky ass shit. With no some... way. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Oh. No, no, no. He's gone. He's gone. He's, yeah. he's by himself. He's fresh. Got his fresh team. And uh, so what do you think about this? You know, he's I believe he's approaching 40, if not right there. What do you think about Diego jumping back in and, and fighting bare knuckle? Dude, Diego, you're a savage, man. Uh, you know, like I hope, uh, I hope your health and brain health, especially, is like all there, and uh, you know, you, you, these fights go well for you. You know, nothing crazy happens. Yeah. But Scary. he is known to get cut, right? I feel like he's gotten he's, yeah, cut. Yeah, he gets cut yeah, a lot because he's got he's, he has so many fights, man. When you fight that much, your scar tissue. So I would like to see who 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 they pair him up against. Is it David Feldman or no? That's just a name through it. Uh, uh, that's just a uh, yeah. Argument. So good for him. He you know, probably still has the competitive spirit. He wants to compete, uh, make some cash. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I hope he doesn't get you know starched out there in the bare knuckle. Ring, yeah, all right. right. I'll be rooting for him, of course. Yeah, me too. So that'll be it, guys. Thanks for watching the MMA Rundown, brought to you by FanDuel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and thank you to all you guys watching out, listening out there in podcast land. See ya. See ya. Thank you.